Hey guys, it's Joshy here, and I'm back with another Ultra Sun Ultra Moon Wi Fi battle. But before we get into that, let me just re remind you that I will be streaming Sword and Shield live from the 15th at about 12 30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, that is 5 30 a.m. PTD time. On, so PDT on the 14th and GMT is 1.30 p.m. on the 14th. So if you should be able to figure it out of them, but if not, you are welcome to comment below and I'll help you. But it will be live and it will be on Twitch, which is linked below. But let's get into it. So this was off, uh, this was against Blade. It was during a stream a little while ago. And I thought, you know what? This was a really fun battle. And I wanted to show this Pokemon again because it was an underrated... Um, underrated buff to the Pokemon in my opinion and um, after seeing Fufu2's um, video and Pokemon's video recently about the buffs I really wanted to show it off. Anyway let's get into it. So I led off with my shiny fortress, he led off with Greninja. Now the reason I lead off with this for fortress and I probably made it too obvious by now is the fact that a lot of people expect a setup, spikes, toxic spikes, stealth rocks, that and I don't I go for a nice strong attack. Either way he swaps into his um, Salamence and I'm like mm, swapping into Salamence I'm expecting flamethrower or fire fang. So, I'm going to swap into my Gigalith here, which is my underrated boost Pokemon, obviously, and um, show why Gigalith is a threat in general. So, I'm going to get hit with a Flamethrower. Now, I actually went into this Gigalith to quickly check recently and what spread of EVs I did, but I didn't realize I never actually got him to 100 like I meant to. His attack stat is pretty low on IVs, so imagine if this thing had high IV attack stat. But anyway, he swaps out there, brings in... Um, I missed the Stone Edge, but that's all right. I would have broken the Sturdy. That's the only thing I would have been a bit more happy with. So, I'm going to get Flash Cannon here, but I am Assault Vested, which is an extra 50 pounds special defense with already max special defense then in sandstorm and i'm rock type so that's an extra 50 percent special defense so i'm gonna hit the earthquake i'm gonna take um attractive down to the sturdy but unfortunately if i hit the stone edge that thing would have been dead with only one attack so he does get another attack off which is a little bit nah, about the miss but it's all right we're still gonna shine because we are shiny assault faster gigalith with sandstream so i'm very happy with that so, anyway, I'm going to Iron Head because I ain't missing that. And I thought maybe he will swap. I don't think he would, but there's a possibility. So, anyway, um, he's down. So, Emerald's coming back in. I love Emerald as a general name for him. I got called mine Crescent, though. So, anyway, he's actually going to double swap out from Emerald into... Um, sorry. Agristella, which is his Toxifex. Now, I really do like this. I went for the Stone Edge. I thought, oh, well, this should be alright damage. Again, imagine if I had decent IVs, or good IVs. So, I wasn't sure exactly what we are getting, but I expected most likely a Baneful Bunker, because if I could hit something physical and get poisoned off it, it would be much more beneficial to him for someone who is kind of hard to get through at this point. But then he's actually going to swap out here and um, bring back in Emerald, and I wasn't exactly sure on his game plan here, but I did go for the Earthquake again after revealing it, so I thought, oh, well, I don't really want to get hit at the moment. He's actually going to swap again. Now, the thing is, he can keep pulling this swap because, um, obviously, Regenerator, this thing's going to keep getting his HP back. So I went for the Stone Edge again, and I was like, okay, well, this is going to be a pretty repetitive loop, so I'm expecting the Baneful Bunker, so I'm going to take that chance to take a free swap, and I'm going to bring in my Watchhog here. So, um, Watchhog's going to, you know, get a free swap in and now I'm going to go for my Z move. So this is Psychium Z uh, on Psychic, uh, not Psychic Hypnosis. So this actually gives me a speed boost but it also, as long as it hits, puts him to sleep and gives me a setup turn or two. Now the thing is, I do have a sweet video with this baby so if you wanted to check that out, you can search that on my channel if you find my Pokemon Sweeps folder uh, playlist. It should be listed somewhere on the homepage or you can just go to the playlist itself. So anyway, um, Oh, sorry, Agristella is asleep. I'm going to go for the Nasty Plot. I wouldn't have exactly minded a swap into anyone necessarily here, but yeah. So anyway, I'm going to go for the Nasty Plot, as I said. So I'm plus two in Special Attack. I am carrying Flamethrower and Thunderbolt. Went for a second Nasty Plot. I thought this should work. We'll see how it goes. And hoping for the best. Um, Agristella wakes up, goes for the Sludge Bomb, and I thought, let's see how much damage it does. So... It does less than half, but I am poisoned. Now, here is where I could have thought a little bit better, and I thought, okay, being poisoned, he's probably going to try and wear me down. So he's probably going to go for a Baneful Bunker, as you would. That extra damage on a possible sweeper, best thing ever, especially if it means nothing for, you know. So I should have gone for another Nasty Plot there, which I really, really unhappy, you know, of how I went. So I just went for the Thunderbolt here, and... 
that's definitely going to take it out at, you know, at three times special attack. So again, I really wish that I went for an extra one so it could have been four times, but I didn't. So now we're going to get Charlotte coming in, which is the Shiny Mancino, and I was like, okay. So I'm hoping to outspeed this, and I do. I went for the Flamethrower here, and um, ah, this is where I wish I had that other nasty plot. Because now I'm going to get hit with the Swift. So I was like, great. Just great. That's what I wanted. It's great. So I'm going to go down there. I'm, I'm a little upset I didn't get to do a bit more, but that's all right. So Scolopede's coming in here. I'm like, I love this shiny Scolopede. Wish it had speed boost like it originally was meant to, but you know. So Poison Jab it is. And Death to Charlotte. Sorry, just had to hold back a sneeze there. That came out of nowhere. So, we're down to um, his last three, and I do have five, but he has some threats. So, Emerald's coming in here. I was like, mm, I'm going to stay in here. I'm going to go for the um, Poison Jab. I'm really hoping just to kind of get a Poison off. And I do. I was like, yes. So, he's going to go for the Fly. So, I was like, okay. I don't know why he ran Fly, but then everyone has their reasons. But I actually said to him I probably would have run a normal type attack. But then again, if he was working with really other Pokemon hoping for the poison, then the earthquake swap, and then the fly to avoid, that isn't the worst idea ever. So I thought I'm going to swap into Gigalith here. I'll take this nicely, obviously. And, um, and then he's not going to just take poison damage, but he's also going to be taking sandstorm damage. So I was pretty damn happy with that one. So now I thought, oh, what do I want to do here? So he actually ends up swapping out Emerald there, which I was a little surprised with. But we're going to get better Ditto coming in, which is a Zoroark. But it's really weird when you... I've done it before where you don't think about it. And you just quickly put your first Pokemon you want to use in and quickly whatever. And then you put Zoroark last. And it's like, well, now Zoroark is going to look like Zoroark when it comes out. So anyway, he um, goes through the night days. Unfortunate for him, I have that super special defense. Lucky I went for Iron Head to kill him off because, uh, yeah, after that accuracy drop, it wasn't really worth the risk. So now he's down to two. The only problem is they are two threats, and if they start getting rolling, they could go anywhere. So anyway, Elmrod's in. I'm expecting just to go down here to something, and yep, okay, Dragon Claw, that's fair. So I thought, well, I'm happy with that because I can make good use of this, see? Because as much as he's poisoned and everything, he's still alive. And there's one Pokemon that can make good use. So I'm going to bring back in my Fortress because I'm hoping to be flamethrowered and brought down to 1 HP. Because, well, I carry the Cast at Barry. So I can make a good use of this afterwards going first against a Greninja. So anyway, we're, yeah, as I said, down to that. Uh, we're going to go for the Gyro Ball. I am obviously much slower than a Mega Salamance, so Mega Salamance is going down. Although, as well, it probably didn't matter at all how hard I hit. It would have been going down pretty much. So now we're just back to this Greninja. So here is um, a mistake I made. So, yeah, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Got the Custard Berry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I went for Revenge. Uh, which is a move that goes second. It has a lower priority status due to the fact that it um, works better when you attack second. So if I just went for Bug Bite or that, I would have done a nice chunk. So I thought, oh well, let's bring in my Houndoom here. This is a Mega Houndoom set. So I thought maybe, depending what he has, I could live a hit because I am actually a... Um, uh, I'm max HP, max defense, and he's probably a special attacker. But there is a chance I could, you know, possibly toxic him or something. But unfortunately, no, and uh, he isn't going to outspeed. I may have outsped if I was speed invested, but I ain't. So Mega Houndoom is going to go down there. So we're down to our last two. First off, Scolopede. Now, I thought maybe I could live a hit. I'm hoping, you know, a missed Hydro Pump or a Hydro Pump that leaves me on nothing. And then I can just get a good Poison Jab or Mega Horn off. But then he goes for extra sensory, and I thought, oh sweet, as long as I survive this, I can take him out. The problem is, I didn't survive it. So now I'm down to my last mon, so I'm like, this thing is almost getting a clutch. Almost. But I have the Kling Clang sitting in the back. Now, I thought, let's just kill him, and then I thought, wait a second. You don't know what move he's going to use, so you don't know what's necessarily going to be super effective or not. Second thing is, knowing my luck, I'll leave him on 1 HP. So I thought, let's do the smart thing, and let's go for the shift gear. So I max speed, max attack with shift gear. So I am now going to be plus two in speed, 
plus one in attack with a wild charge. I'm pretty darn sure I'm going to be taking him out because he is definitely weak to it. So as I said, wild charge, that's going to go down. I thought, oh, this could be a draw. How exciting after all that. But it's not because I live on nine HP and I win. So there you go. But it was really a good battle and I really enjoyed it. So if you guys did enjoy that battle, please do. I mean, we've got to do something for Gigalith today. I think we'll, um, I mean, we really should Stone Edge. It's his stab move. Uh, don't forget Discord, Twitch, and Twitter are linked down below as well, the comment section. But don't forget as well with Twitch, as I said earlier, I will be streaming on the 15th Australian Eastern Standard Time, 12.30am, Sword and Shield, straight off the bat. And I'm hoping, well, it will be a minimum seven hour sweep, uh, stream, but I'm expecting about 12. And that will start at PD time, 5.30am on the 14th, and GMT time, 1.30pm on the 14th. So that should help you work out. And finally, guys, if you'd like to keep up to date, show your support or anything on YouTube, the sub button is down there. But anyway, guys, until my next video, I'll see ya.